In this Apple TV, how to perfect your settings and use of your device video, we're gonna talk about apps. Apple TV has, I think, a bunch of really cool customizations and interfaces for managing the actual Apple TV platform, the presentation of the apps, how you use them, and all of that. So let's kind of talk through some of the more interesting and powerful aspects to make sure that you're getting the most customization and organization out of your use of an Apple TV. Here we are just at the home screen. One of the things that I wanna point out right off of the bat is the ability to kind of quick switch and force close apps when you may need to. So I've got the regular Apple TV Siri remote here. And first of all, I'm gonna double tap on this home, what they used to call guide button. And we can see the screen kind of pops out a little bit and we go to this app switcher view. I think this is awesome. If you're jumping back and forth between multiple apps, maybe settings and something else while you're setting something up or a game and, and a video app, whatever it might be, you can tap left and right. And when you find the app that you're looking to go into, bam, hit it and you're in there, double tap again and we're back. Now, the other cool part of this element of the UI is if you're ever having trouble with an app, it's not working right, something is awry, you can force close an app like you can on most Apple devices by just swiping up. Go to the app, swipe up, and swipe it away. Now the next time that you go to actually use that app or launch that app, it will kind of reboot and fully relaunch and reinitialize, which in, hopefully in most cases may solve any problems or trouble that you might be having with it. Now one of the other cool things that you can do with the Apple TV UI is completely control the order of the app presentation as well as putting apps into common folders and stuff together. We can see here in my UI that I leave most of my apps kind of spread out, alphabetized, I'm one for organization, but I also have a couple folders down here on the bottom. One that I call games, which not surprisingly has all of the games that we currently have installed on the Apple TV in it, also alphabetized. And then I have another folder that I just call Apple, where I kind of throw all of the utility, built-in, uh, system use and, and type apps that are not specifically for video content consumption or watching TV shows and movies. Now you can put whatever you want in these folders, you can rename these folders. So let's talk about how you do that. First of all, if you wanna just move something around the UI, you can go over any app, you can long press and hold basically the enter button in the middle of the touchpad there, and we can see that app is kind of like jiggling around. Now, if I use the touch, I use the thumb controls, or just tap up, down, left, or right, if you've actually disabled the touch controls, I can move this app to another location in the UI. So that's how I achieve the alphabetization. Although Apple, it would be pretty cool if there was a way to kind of like just quick alphabetize everything. That would be a nice little feature. Now, if I take an app and I kind of move it over and hold it over another app, that's one way to kind of automatically make a folder. And if I move it off of there and back to the UI, that's an easy way to take an app out of a folder. Pretty cool. And if I want to do a couple of other things, we can see it's already giving me a prompt at the bottom here. Press play pause for options. So if I hit that, now I go to a submenu and I've got a few different capabilities here. One, I can delete the app. So this is really the quickest, easiest way to remove an app from your Apple TV. I can also go to new folder. So if I want to put an app in one folder or start a folder for an app, that's an easy way to do it. I can go up there, entertainment. I can rename the app. And if you're watching all the videos in this series, you now know how to access the grid keyboard instead of that letter strip that you normally get at the top. I can call this whatever I want, I can call it done, and there we go. So if I go back, now I've created a folder and that folder's there. The other cool thing is some of the quick options that are dynamic, again, if I go to an app, I long press, I hit play pause, I have additional options to move this app to a folder. So I can quick move it into another folder that I've already created on the UI. So if you're making a folder and you wanna dump a bunch of stuff into it, you don't have to mess around with the touch and the swiping and all of that sort of stuff you can just do the quick moves. And if you have the touch disabled, you probably can't even get apps into a folder without going through these menu options anyway, because the up, down, left, and right will just move the app. It won't give you the ability to kind of like swipe it over on top of something else to insert it into that folder. All right, so I'm back where I was. I deleted that temporary folder that I made there. 
And a couple other things that I want to point out with regards to apps is both kind of app management and updates and that sort of thing. So one of the things that you may not know is if you ever go to an app on your Apple TV and you see the blue dot next to its name there, I've got the blue dot next to Infuse, that means that the app has been updated in the platform, in the Apple ecosystem, in the store since you've last accessed it. I think that's kind of a cool feature. I like to get indications when software and devices that I'm using is having changes, having updates, having new features and all of that. So pretty cool. After you launch an app for the first time, since it's update, the blue dot will go away. And with regards to actually managing the updates and the administration of the apps, I recommend a couple of settings. So if we go into settings and then apps, we can see here a couple of useful things at the top and I'll talk about here what I have them set to and why I recommend those settings. So the first option is called automatically update apps. I have that set to on. I don't ever want to have to go into the app store and manually manage the updates of the apps on a device like this. Automatic updates I think is perfect. So set that on, leave it on, and again, you'll at least get the blue dot when the system has updated stuff for you. The second one though, automatically install apps. I think by default in an Apple TV, this will actually be set to on. In other devices in the Apple ecosystem have similar settings as well in their iTunes store like iPhones and iPads. And what this means if you have this on is that if you have an iPad, you have an iPhone, you have another device, whatever, and you install something and there's equivalent app for another device, that device will just install it. So maybe in some cases you install it, you just subscribe to Netflix, you install it on your iPad. Well, maybe you would like Netflix to automatically just show up on your Apple TV. However, I like to curate things a little more than that. And so I may install apps on another device, take them off, whatever. I don't want anything additional kind of magically showing up on my Apple TV UI. If there's an app that I want, I will go to the store, I will find it, and I will install it. Thank you, Apple. So I always disable that setting for myself. The third one is called Offload Unused App. And this is like a storage protection thing. They do this on other Apple devices as well, meaning you've loaded your device up with apps. Maybe you're running out of space and the system can kind of keep an eye on what you're using, what you're not using. And if it needs to recover space, it will remove unused stuff. In most cases, it will still present it to you in the UI. The app will still be there. You can launch it. However, if you do that and it had been offloaded, it will have to re-download and set itself up. I think this is pretty much a useless feature nowadays, especially when we have the 2022 model Apple TV, which comes with 64 or 128 gigabytes of storage. That's a lot of storage for apps and for games and all the stuff that you may use an Apple TV for. So I never want the system taking something away so that when I go to use it, I have to wait or there's an extra step or some delay in actually being able to access the thing that I was trying to access. So this is another feature that I disable, I turn off, I don't want to use that one. And then lastly, one of the coolest, coolest aspects, I think, of the Apple TV platform and you know being an Apple ecosystem user overall is how multiple devices in your Apple ecosystem can kind of sync or when you upgrade from one device to another, you can very quickly kind of replicate uh, your setup and all of your um, configurations from one device, the older device to the new one. And so if you have multiple Apple TVs or even if you don't because the value of upgrading from one generation to the next, I love how the Apple TV lets you do basically a home screen sync of all your apps in their presentation in their organization. So if you go into settings, users and accounts, and you access your user account, we have an option here in the middle. It's called one home screen. Of course, I have this set to on. I love this. What this means is that multiple Apple TVs, and I have two of them. I've got one in the living room here. I've got one in the theater downstairs. If I change an app, if I remove an app, add an app, put stuff in folders, change the name of folders, or move them around, the UIs of these two Apple TVs, because of this setting through iCloud, will always stay in sync with each other. So it means that I can have multiple Apple TVs and I don't have to individually administer them. It is so awesome. And in the case of like upgrading from the prior model to the 2022s, with this setting on, I showed it off when I, when I did the long live stream. You basically plug the new device in, you log in with your iCloud account, wait about a minute and boom, it will instantly download all your apps, put them in the right organization 
and take care of everything for you. A really, really cool feature, super useful, super powerful under the banner of this Apple ecosystem. So there you go, a whole bunch of hopefully power user, beginner friendly tips to kind of master your Apple TV, perfect the use of it, and manage, administer, and efficiently and easily take care of all of the app related functionality on the box. I hope you're enjoying this series. Please let me know what other topics related to the Apple TV I could cover and take a look at the previous videos in this series, one of which will be popping up here in a moment. Otherwise, please do all that regular YouTube stuff like subscribe, notifications, share the video. And if you find these videos helpful, YouTube has a super thanks. I would very much appreciate it. And there's other ways to support the channel in the description below with affiliate links, memberships, and more. Thanks so much for watching. Come on back for more Apple TV, perfect your settings videos, home theater discussion, and fun.